Hey guys, today we're going to talk about how to avoid a black market hair transplant scam. Unfortunately, a few of my good friends have been subject to black market hair transplant scams. I really wish they would have called me beforehand, but uh, sometimes people just hear things that excite them and unfortunately later regret it. And my friend Dr. McGrath, who did my last hair transplant, I think that was four years ago, mm -hmm. about four years ago, has been seeing firsthand a lot of patients who have already been subject to these black market hair transplants. So the reason he's qualified, besides seeing these patients every day, is he's currently the president of the American Board of Hair Restoration Surgeons, and Dr. McGrath has been a member of the International Society of Hair Restoration Surgeons, which has started this campaign against black market hair transplants. He's been a member for over 10 years. I'll, I'll quickly share a story of a friend of mine who I had met and I knew that he was losing his hair and he wrote me and he said, hey David, I'm about to go have this hair transplant. I've already signed up with, uh, it was actually in, in London, in the UK. So I was thinking, okay, well, like it's a major metropolis. This should probably be okay. And I asked him you know, who the surgeon was and he said, oh, everything's great. This surgeon actually has done surgery on some famous football players, like we call soccer. Uh, some famous soccer players and they had really great results so like everything's going to be fine so i was like okay cool like as long as you've done your research and everything i i mean i'd never heard of this clinic but you know go ahead and, and give it a shot and he wrote me months later uh there's now a suit against this company and the person that did his surgery wasn't even the same person that did the surgery on the famous soccer player so it was just they just used that they used it under that name it's a under their brand name got that one surgery done took pictures famous soccer players come here and then just churn <laughs> guys through this place giving them awful hair transplants it's pretty horrible you know the sad thing is is it it even happens here in the united states here in our own country there are multiple clinics that you can find where they buy a machine they have a surgeon that maybe serves as a medical director but absolutely knows nothing about hair restoration surgery. They bring technicians in to do the entire case and they end up with very poor work. The problem is that many times a patient will go and see, well, this is a well you know, recognized, reputable plastic surgeon, they're board certified, but they have no knowledge about what to do with hair. So they basically uh, delegate all of the services to the technicians but I know the patients I see, they want the doctor working on them. They don't want to have a group of technicians working on them. The International Society of Hair Restoration Surgery, better known as the ISHRS, they're the mothership. Anyone who is involved in hair restoration surgery on a serious basis is going to be making application and wanting to be part of this organization. We have over a thousand members that represent over 70 countries. And we basically are the individuals that know that we have a primary interest in hair. That's what we do. And as a result of that, many of our surgeons, myself included, have become more and more aware of what's going on internationally with what a lot of unfortunate patients are having to go through. And the ISHRS has come out with the campaign. We have named it Fight the Fight. And the fight stands for fraudulent, illicit, global hair transplants. I'm seeing patients that are coming in that have gotten, if you will, a more affordable hair transplant. And in many cases, they are scarred for life. They come back, their donor has been decimated, they get poor growth. And they come to me and ask me, how can I help them? How can I fix them? Every experienced, reputable hair transplant surgeon in the country is facing this. We see these patients every day. We as a group have decided to coalesce and do what we can to help fight this problem because the individual patient isn't always going to know. They see a reasonable price tag, but they don't know that they're getting ready to be put into a clinic in many times where there's no doctor at all and they're going to get worked on just by uh, technicians that are many times are going to be using dirty equipment, unsterilized equipment, using a machine to harvest hair, 
whether it be with follicular unit extraction or even possibly with strip excision. And very, very often this is without even any medical directorship whatsoever, all being done by lay people. This is something that has to stop. We have decided to put our forces together so that at the very least we can help to educate some of the patients out there as to what's going on around the world. The sad thing about this entire campaign is it's not only happening abroad, of course it is, but it's happening within our own United States as well. We want to bring attention to this. We don't have a problem as an organization with individuals that want to do hair restoration surgery as long as it's the surgeon that's actually doing the work that's primarily involved in the case and actually has some working knowledge about how a hair transplant should take place, what it should look like, and who's a good candidate and who is not. We have examples of international clinics that are uh, pirating photographs. I've had it happen from my own practice where they will pirate my before and after photos, use them on their ad advertisements, and the person sees this amazing result and they think, wow, I want that. The way you can avoid this really is, is very, very simple. I hate to use the old adage that, you know, if it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. But I think that's a good starting place. I think if you're going to choose anywhere in the world to have a hair transplant surgery done, there need to be some basic questions that are asked, and they have to be asked right up front. Number one, can you show me from your clinic the doctor who is doing the work, can I see some of your own before and after photos, number one. Number two, is the physician that is associated with this hair transplant clinic, how many cases have they done themselves and are they going to be involved in the procedure or is it just going to be delegated to technicians? If you were to ask just those two questions, you could avoid 90% of the problems that a lot of patients run into. If people are using before and after photos, and I've seen a few different surgeons talk about that where they, they're going, hey, my work is being used by someone else, my before and after photos, what would be a way of kind of combating that? You know? Well, certainly in, in the States, it's pretty straightforward. I have an organization that I work with who you, of course, you've met Lou, you know my, my, uh, my team that, that watches this very carefully. Mm -hmm. And if any of my photos pop up, it's immediately recognized and we send them a cease and desist uh, right away and within the states it's pretty easy to manage that but in some of these international clinics you show up maybe you go along with a junket of twenty or thirty other guys who paid a very nominal fee mm -hmm. and they think they're going to get a great hair transplant here's the irony there may have been a few cases where patients go and they get good work and it worked out for them mm -hmm. so I'm not saying that there hasn't been some cases that are done and actually turned out okay, but the vast majority of these cases are unsupervised, they're not being monitored by a physician or a surgeon in any way, shape, or form, and if they are, they're surgeons that don't know anything about hair restoration surgery. Remember guys, one of the first things that has to be determined is, number one, are you even a reasonable candidate yeah. for hair restoration surgery? I see that even here in the States where surgeons will be very, very eager to jump on and do a case, particularly some of these, uh, let's just say if it's a plastic surgeon's office, they're just getting started. And you know what? Maybe they bought a robot and they need to pay this robot off. So guess what? They never saw a head they didn't like. So everybody gets quoted a price. Everybody's a good candidate. They put everybody in the chair. And then they come to see me afterwards and say, oh, geez, I wish I had come and spoke to you first. Yeah. The patients need to ask a few questions. Just because you heard that your buddy had a good job done, do your own homework and investigate the clinic, particularly if it's a clinic that's an international clinic. There are a number of them that are very reputable, that are surgeons that are certified by the American Board of Hair Restoration Surgery, and you can guarantee that you're going to get very good work done.
Yeah, and just so you know, you don't have to be American to be part of the American Board of Hair Restoration Surgeons. Not at all. Yeah, so at all. there are a lot of international surgeons also part of that board. That is just a certifying board yes. that then makes sure that you go through different testing in order to qualify to be part of that. Certainly. So it's one way of, of guaranteeing that you've you've been correctly tested and you know what you're doing. Sure. And I'll say in the same breath, um, I mean, I work with surgeons in our country uh, for many, many years, and I know a number of exceptionally talented surgeons who just haven't sat for the board examination. That mm -hmm. doesn't mean that they're not excellent surgeons. We at the ABHRS, we're a subset of the ISHRS, we just have put together over the past 20 years a certification process that helps the public to understand that this surgeon at least has been vetted. At least they know. You can't just sit down for the exam. Basically, you have to present that you've had experience, mm -hmm. and then they go through a process of elimination. Some people are allowed to sit for the exam, some are not. But I don't want there to be any misconception that if you're not certified by the ABHRS, that means that you're not a good surgeon. That's yeah. not true. Okay. However, I will tell you, <laughs> if you are certified by the ABHRS, there's a very, very high chance that you have somebody that is able to do good work. Mm -hmm. Hope this helps you guys. See you soon.